Hey, Mark Rose here at the Mid-Atlantic NostalgiaCon 2017 with the tall, the good-looking Mr. Larry Wilcox. How you doing, brother? I'm good, Mark. You look good, man. You Thank look you. pretty good. A lot of our fans know you from Chips, mm -hmm. a lot of other things. One of the questions I like to ask first, what gave you the bug? The, when you did your acting career, what really said, okay, this is it, this is what I want to do? Uh, income. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's the most honest answer I've had from any guest in a long time. Yeah. But, I, you know, I was a young kid, and uh, I started doing a lot of commercials. Yes, sir. And I would, commercials are great because you can do, and it seemed like I was getting almost every commercial I was going on. Wow. Cause I was boy next door, young yep. guy, you know, looked like I delivered their paper. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, you'd work on 10 commercials a year and make six figures. Wow. And I'd wave to the guy next door going to work in the morning. And when he came home, I'd wave at him. And, What's this kid doing, selling drugs, you know? But it was good for me. Yes. And uh, then after that, you know, you start thinking you're an actor. It's <laughs> okay. And you study acting yes, and sir. do all that other stuff sure but, uh, it was good to me I good. I always think that I got a lucky leg up and uh, that's what we're here for for society to give other people a leg up good you know? deal good yeah. deal good words when you go to shows and conventions and things how long have you been doing that and wh what's the feedback how, how do you like having people come right up and wow I remember wow I remember wow give me a kiss you know? yeah yeah well, it's gratifying, you know, we meet all kinds of people. We meet, uh, you know, the 40 year old woman that's 12. Right. And so she remembers her childhood and her, she's blushing and palpitating right, and right. all those things, right? So you have that and then you have the, the policeman who became a policeman because of you. Yes, and, uh, yes. Or the show Chips, if you will. Yes, sir. And, uh, and then, you know, but I always say, you know, I meet uh, people that are um, challenged and uh, if they're physically or mentally challenged, they're really special to see their heart in their eyes. Awesome. And uh, so being able to see that soul or that heart is exciting to Fantastic. me. Fantastic. And then the last thing is the one thing that I think actors don't do when they come to these things is I meet business people that I make deals with. Wow. wow. Every single time. Now, sometimes a simple deal like uh, I didn't bring it in my, in my phone case over okay. there. I came, this real bashful guy came up, had a really hard time talking, and but I befriended him and sure. talked quietly. And next thing I know, I realized that he manufactures phone cases that have all these tools for emergencies in them. Oh, and wow. he does hatchets and knives. and I, So each place I'll make a little deal here, Fantastic. a little deal there. Fantastic. That's blast. great. Yeah. That, um, man after my own heart, because I like the mini deals wherever you go. There's yeah. Little, yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. And I know that the fans love it, and I know it's just all the business that you're getting with that. Yeah. And and these people that are coming up, I've seen the lines, the lines of, of just people coming up and like, right. oh, who's here? Right. Larry and Eric? Yeah. When you knew you had the part in Chips, because mm -hmm. we all know you best from Chips, how was that? How did you get the role? And, and tell us a little bit about that process from there, mm -hmm. sir. Well, I, I had done uh, Hawaii Five O that the original producer of Chips, Rick Rosner, saw in a movie with Farrah Fawcett called The Great American Beauty Contest. Right. So he asked me to do Chips, beef, and I had done a pilot with uh, Don Meredith uh, called Aero Bureau. Yes, sir. That's Dandy that, Don. Yeah. Right. Yes, sir. And, and it didn't sell, and Rick Rosner was the producer. So he asked me to do chips from the beginning and, oh, okay. and then then asked me to cast the other character Eric, wow Eric so you didn't really have to do a whole like uh a no. cattle call thing you they knew you was right right on yeah right on so it was good and uh you know turned out great with eric because eric's bigger than life <laughs> and uh, his character was opposite mine i was a straight guy and yes. he was the lover yes. boy latin lover yes but you guys did a wonderful job yeah. wonderful acting in that we, that was really good we had a good time good. and to this day you know we have good times we laughing at each other and poking fun <laughs> and it's great you know what's one of the most i would say the fun or funniest thing that happened that no one else has heard yet uh, on the set or behind the scenes of the show Chips. What do you think is a really great anecdote that no one's heard before? Well, I think they've all heard it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> throw it out, that's okay. It's uh, seeing this motorcycle coming down the freeway at about 80, 90 miles an hour with the red lights blinking and his big teeth, Eric Estrada <laughs> smiling and on the girl back of the motorcycle, naked girl. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's punch. <laughs> that, <laughs> I love it. That's yeah. fantastic. Now, for you, um, <laughs> when you're off downtime, if you have any downtime, right. do you do you collect anything? Do you have any hobbies? What What do you like to do? And well, I love business. You know, we I I just put together two major capital funds, investment funds. Wow. And so we take those investment funds, uh, usually hundred million dollars or greater, to do energy projects and micro cities. Oh my God. So we take inline hydro turbines and put them into countries that produce five times more energy than wind Ooh. or solar. Wow. And then we just put together a large fund to to do films. I was telling Calvin. You know, when you have money and you start looking at the choices to invest that money, whether it's oil deals or gold deals sure. or, you know, things that have a 3x or 4x return wow. in terms of ROI, you don't do yes, films. Sir. Yes, sir. But we're going to do some films. We'll probably do 10 to 20 films. And uh, Wow. Can I'll, you tell us anything that, uh, or did you have to kill me? Do you know any of the projects coming up that you can talk about? We just made a deal with a company called Media Farm, yes, and they have 12 projects. We'll produce all 12 of their Fantastic. movies. Some will be CGI. Some will be action, adventure, drama. Some are faith-based. Sure. Some aren't. Uh, so a little bit of everything. Outstanding. And I just great. finished. Uh, you know, I don't usually do acting anymore. Uh, but I'll do it. I mean, I'm not impressed with actors or producers or human beings, sure. just like you and I. But, right, right. But I just finished a movie about the guy who made the Make-A-Wish Foundation. So Outstanding. With Robert Pine, who was Sergeant Gutierre on Chips. Yes. So yes. that was fun. You know? Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Now, when you're going out to shows, do you and Eric kind of see each other? Uh, I mean, do you have an area you live close? Do you get together besides shows and projects? You guys hang? You guys schmooze? You guys schmai? No, I only see Eric at shows because, shows. you know, Eric's um, two things Eric does. He'll tell you about himself, but he's a policeman in real life. Yes, sir. And But he also does uh, these kinds of personal appearances all the time. So he makes his living doing personal appearances. Okay. Um, for me, I'm in business all yes. day long, and like this it's morning on the phone deal, negotiating sure. with attorneys yes. and stuff. So, wow. you know, it doesn't call for us to interface on a sure, weekly. Sure. But I'm always excited to see yeah. him at these yeah. shows because we, we poke fun of each other That's and have really a good time. Great. Yeah. yeah, I saw you guys are really having a good time with each other and with the guests and with yeah. the fans. Yeah. So in the business and everything that you're doing, do you personally – like collect like the, the guests are here oh. to give autographs and there's everybody here collects something yeah. sign yeah. this or i've had this forever are you a collector of anything at all besides uh the business world that you're in no i mean i so autographs are not really the, your your no gun. yeah the only thing i collect maybe and because there's reciprocity you know some people say what do you get out of these shows and an actor tells you what he got what he should be telling you is you know, I got, they got Larry Wilcox's autograph, but I got things back from them also. You know, their yes. love, their charm, their yes. heart, their soul, yes. their talk about their loss of their brother, mother, sister, cousin, whatever. Yeah. I mean, that's a nice they share, uh, interface. They share yeah, they you. share their lives. But to answer your question, the only thing that I have a little bit of collection of are all the police badges over the last 50 years, right? So I have a police badge from wow. almost every city. Wow. And, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Outstanding. And then Excellent. there's a special place in my heart for policemen because I was in the Marine Corps and yes, uh, in war. Yes, sir. And so I think a policeman, I went in war for 13 months. A policeman's in war for his life. Yes, sir. His entire career. So yes, I always think, wow, these guys are really special people. Good words. Yeah. Fantastic. You're a great guy. <laughs> I hope you do fantastic business. Thank you. And I hear if there's a lookalike Richard Dreyfus fund, I'm applying. <laughs> I got a good arm piece for you waiting <laughs> waiting in the background. <laughs> Mr. Larry Wilcox, you're a great guy, Thank you, man. Mark. Thank you for a wonderful interview. All right. So Thank Larry you. Wilcox, Mid-Atlantic Nostalgicon. Thank you.